friends, it's Teresa and welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I'm doing the Halloween Town book tag today and I was happily tagged by my friend Lisa over at Lisa Marie Reads. I will leave her link down below as well as the questions and then the original creators, Peyton from Peyton Reads and Brittany from Brittany and Books and I'll be sure to leave their channels linked down below as well and any of the questions. So, I believe there are 12 questions altogether. I could be wrong, but... So I'll just have Edding and Therese tell me if I'm wrong or right. So let's just kind of get into it because we all know my penchant for babbling incessantly for no reason. The first question is Halloween Town and that is name a fictional place that you'd like to be real. And not gonna lie, I, it took me a minute to decide what fictional place I wanted to be real. You think I would have like a decision by now after reading how many, however many books for so many years, but I don't. For the fictional place that I decided I'd like to actually live in. I ended up choosing The Night Court from A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Mass. This is the second book to the A Court of Something 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 series that apparently is still ongoing. I just like The Night Court. I like the idea of The Night Court. I like the wardrobe from The Night Court. The people from The Night Court just seem happy and sweet and just welcoming. And I need some of that in my life. So, Night Court. I wish it was real. I wish I could go visit it. I don't know if I'd want to be one of the civilians who probably saw their the High Lord and High Lady of the Night Court screwing in midair. I don't think I want to be in that position, but I'd like to be in every other situation that the Night Court seems to be in. Just minus, you know, walking down the street with your kitties and seeing that. The next prompt is Marnie, and that is name a book about witches, and we all know how much I love witches. We all know this. So while I could go with the books that I have previously mentioned, like pretty recently on this channel, I'm gonna go with an oldie and a, but a goodie, and that is The Night Court by L.J. Smith. This is one of her original pieces, I think. This is, I believe, her or one of her, like, beginning pieces of writing before The Vampire Diaries and The Secret Circle. This is about basically a bunch of different characters in this night world scenario where they're all like vampires and witches and werewolves living behind the scenes of the world. Like we don't know they're there, but they're there and they sometimes wreak havoc and sometimes they don't. And I just love this series. It's one of my favorite series to go back to and reread. I am trash for this book series and I wish LJ Smith would finish it and there's literally no news on it. Last I heard it was supposed to come out back in like 2018. And now it's indefinite as to when it's going to come out because I believe L.J. Smith underwent like a really terrible illness these past few years. So whether or not the book will come out, who knows? But will I, Therese, write my own story to finish out this series, to fix my own needs, to have this series concluded? Maybe. Most likely. The next prompt is Sophie and that is name your favorite middle grade book. And I had to choose between two of my favorites. One, we, pro we have all heard me mention this book several times, we're not going to even talk about it. But the one I ended up choosing was Everlasting Nora by Marie Miranda Cruz. This is a middle grade book, duh, about sweet little Nora who has kind of been forced to take on a pretty adult role after the death of her father in a fire and her mom's very difficult gambling problem. When her mom goes missing, she now has to find her mother and figure out exactly what happened to her and how she can help her. This is one of the more heartbreaking stories that I have read as a middle grade novel and I really enjoyed it. It's very heartwarming and it kind of paints a picture of like some realities in the Philippines that I feel like aren't talked enough about, especially in the more Western cultures, but I'm not going to get into that issue right now. <laughs> the next prompt is Dylan and that is name a book with a magical school. Now I could have gone for a very simple book. But I decided to spice things up with a book that I have not read yet, and that is The Magicians by Lev Grossman. I've been meaning to pick up this book. I swear I will get to it probably in December. This is an adult fantasy novel following Quentin, who, has, who kind of doesn't really fit in. And then I think when he's trying, yeah, he's a high school genius who's really focused on these magical books called, from Fillory which is like basically another kind of Narnia. And he finds out that this world that he loves does exist and he's able to do magic that he's able to go visit this world. And that's, that's basically it. Basically, from what my understanding of the TV show, which they're two very different concepts, they just have the similar like plot line, is that it's adult Harry Potter set in college, but the TV show has a lot of drugs to it. And I think the book has a lot of depth to it. But I do know that Love Grossman also 
consulted in the TV show. So I'm assuming that it kind of worked with how he wanted it, how he wanted the book series to work with as well. Hopefully I get to this before the end of 2020. But December, this is gonna be on there for December. And if it's not on there for December, I need y'all to yell at me to put this on December. So this is how we're doing it. I'm holding myself accountable by ha making you guys hold me accountable. I'm sorry. The next prompt is Grandma Aggie, and that is pick a book that helped you explore into a brand new world. Now, I read a lot of fantasy books. Therefore, there are a lot of whole new worlds here. I'm basically a, like what happens when you put a whole new world from Aladdin on repeat when I read books. So I had to really choose about a book that was really intriguing to me and was not something that I typically tend to read in terms of like how the world is set up. And I ended up going with The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. I really, really enjoyed how this kind because like a lot of the fairy books that we have now are very much like whimsical and cute and like they betray you but they're also all attractive and you would sleep with them. A Cruel Prince took that and said we're gonna go with the original fae mythology and we're gonna have them be kind of like always, not always so pretty looking, kind of one with nature people who will kill you and make fun of you if you're human. And I just like that and 10 out of 10, if I could, I would be a fairy from this world because I would love to have like horns, but have it be like tree branches. The next prompt is Calabar and that is name your favorite villain. This one is actually no brainer for me. I ended up going with Jonathan Morgenstern from City of Glass by Cassandra Clare. Jonathan is kind of one of the title villains in the last... Four books and he does make an appearance in the later in the later series I really like him primarily because he's a character that's evil for the sake of being evil like we saw his backstory and we understood why he's the way that he is which makes me very sad for him and 10 out of 10 if I could write a redemption arc for a character it would be for Jonathan Morgenstern because like homeboy as a child deserved better but then you know he grew up and we learned that just because he deserved better does not mean you're gonna get any you are not Zuko but I just liked him because he had this sense of like being evil for the sake of being evil he didn't really have a moral compass and while he does have some of Valentine's like mm, morals and bigotry inserted in him he found a way to twist it and make it so it works with him and it just I don't know something about Jonathan the idea of Jonathan, like if I saw him coming toward me, like I probably would run away. Like isn't even an instance of like staring at him because he's so attractive and like getting cut down. I would just take a good look, like long look at him be like, you're too pretty to be good and then run the other way. No, I wouldn't even run the opposite way. I go like, I would go like, what is it? It's not parallel. What's the opposite parallel? Perpendicular. I would run perpendicular because that way I'm no longer in his sight. He's one of my favorite villains of all time and like while I want him to have a redemption arc, he really works well with that one and I like that about him. The next prompt is Benny and that is name a book that gets you out of a dark time. And this one is no brainer to you guys who have, have been on this channel for a while. I mention this book frequently when I'm having a moment and I need to reread something. I even watch the movie religiously when I'm having a bad day. And that is Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. This is a very short adult novel, coming of age novel, involving Charlie who is writing letters to this mysterious friend that he's trying to figure his life out during his freshman year of high school while he's trying to figure out his life. He's also trying to work through his friend's suicide, his aunt's death, and the depression that has come with some past trauma that he hasn't really been able to process. It's a lot, but for some reason the end of it, like the last line of this book, always like makes me somehow like feel comforted. It says here, so if this does end up being my last letter, please believe that things are good with me. And even when they're not, they will be soon enough. And I will believe the same about you. And that's like the, something about those last few lines always gets me into like a, a better mood when I'm having a bad day or just in a kind of a pretty bad place. So always we'll refer back to this book. 
The next prompt is Luke, and that is name a character with a hard exterior but a soft inside. And this one was no brainer, and that is Elias from An Ember in the Ashes. Elias, this is a high fantasy novel. I really enjoy this fantasy series. I like the new kind of like not, it's definitely not set in the western world kind of fantasy, which I really enjoy. I love seeing this different kind of setting and the different mythology in it. So I really can't wait to finish off the series because the third book just came out in paperback so I'm hoping to pick that up sometime soon and Elias, Elias is this sweet little boy who is like supposed to be a soldier and he's super super tough and you think he'll kill you which he can but at the end of the day he's this super soft little boy who ju you just want to protect with all of your heart because he deserves so much better than what he is currently doing to himself. The next prompt is Cal and that is name your guilty pleasure read. This is really no surprise because I read this frequently and I tell you guys all about it all the time. And that is the selection by Kira Cast. This is basically Hunger Games meets The Bachelor. Set in this kind of dystopian world where America Singer sets her name down to be kind of like one of like the prince's up and coming future brides. She joins the selection and even though she didn't want to, she ends up being picked and shipped off to meet Prince Maxon and things ensue and it's such a guilty pleasure to read for me because I just adore Max and Shreve. That is it. I like I like America as a character but sometimes she gets on my nerves but Maxon is a precious little bean. He's basically Ben from The Descendants. If that does not explain to you the kind of person that Maxon is. He is Ben from The Descendants. Like the Disney movie The Descendants. The next prompt is Gort, and that is name a book that you love but always forget to mention. And I'm going to have to go with Stalking Jack the Ripper by Carrie Maniscalco. This is the first book to the, sac the Stalking Jack the Ripper, I think, quartet. Basically, Audrey Rose loves forensic science. She loves like cadavers and bodies and all that fun stuff. But this is the world set where women don't want that. And then Jack the Ripper begins killing and she is determined to figure out who did it. It's just a really good book. And like Thomas Cresswell is a very, how old is he? he? He's a very good love interest. He's very yummy. I believe he's 18, so I can say that, but he's very yummy. <laughs> I need to finish the books. I read the second books and I have not been able to pick up the third or the fourth book because I'm waiting for them to come out on paperback and we all know the things coming out on paperback takes forever, but I want my covers to match. The next prompt is Ethan and that is name of a character that you'd love to go on a romantic broom ride with. Now, I had to really think about this because I had to picture myself as Marnie flying through the air in the middle of the night with Jesse McCartney playing in the background, the, the cool like crisp autumn breeze flowing through my hair and I had to figure out which fictional character I wanted to be behind me enjoying this moment. It was a very difficult choice because Harry says not a fictional character. But I ended up choosing John Ambrose McLaren from To All the Boys I Loved Before. Well, his P.S. I Still Love You, but this is where he makes an appearance. If there was one boy, note that I said boy because I, I can't choose between my favorite gals, fictional gals. I can't choose them. So I went with a boy because it's an easier decision. If I could choose a single boy to do this romantic broom ride, and it's a fictional boy. It's not a real boy because there is only one boy that I would like to have a romantic broom ride with, but he is not fictional, nor is he Harry Sosa or Chris Evans, but that's beside the point. It would be John Ambrose McLaren. Let's face it, literally, I wouldn't even need Jesse McCartney playing in the background because he will be singing Jesse McCartney in the background. Need I say more? It, he's literally the only choice. He's the only choice, really. And finally, the last prompt is Natalie and name a character who's proud of themselves. And I ended up having to go with Kaz Brecker from Six of Crows. Now, Kaz has a lot of shit going on. I can't explicitly tell you if he's 100% proud of himself, but he acts like he's proud of himself and all the things he's accomplished to become the person that he is today. The Six of Crows is a YA high fantasy that is a spinoff of the original Grishaverse trilogy. This follows a heist story involving these group of misfits who will agree to take on this huge heist where they have to take someone out of prison the stronger prisons of their like universe and kaz brecker is the leader i feel like you have to be kind of proud of yourself to be able to do the things that kaz does despite you know the entire world telling you no you can't do that so he is the perfect choice for this specific book and now i'm gonna go ahead and tag my peeps who have responded 
no one else responded. But I'm gonna go ahead and tag Angie from Angie Reads because she tagged me, so therefore it's just gonna be a continuous circle. And I'm also gonna go ahead and tag Armin. I will leave their channels linked below. And I also tag anyone else who wants to participate. And it's if other people from my group chat decide to respond and wanna be part of this, I also tag them and I'll be leaving their stuff linked down below as well. So that way they know that they are tagged. But until then, hit like, subscribe, comment. Do you guys have or any of these books? Did any of these books pique your interest in the slightest? Have you read them? What do you guys think? Any other book tags you want me to do? I have another book tag that I need to do. It's a Filipino cuisine book tag that Kate tagged me a while ago. But I'm going to save that for November because, you know, November and food and, like, Filipino book. And... Like I said, hit like, subscribe, comment. And I will talk to you guys in my next video, which will be my last reading vlog for Trick or Treat-a-thon. But until then, I hope you guys are having a wonderful week. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.